Well, good afternoon. How are you today? I am going to talk about job loss. And I'm going to tell you that it is not the end of the world. Activists. I have lost two jobs during the pandemic. And the first job that I lost was in 2020. Um, when, I guess it was 2000, yeah, it was 2020. When the pandemic first hit, I was working for this really amazing family. And um, I think this is going to be part one. I was working for this really amazing family and uh, very easy job, great people. But the pandemic hit and they didn't need me because we were going in, is in isolation mode. So nobody could really be around anymore, uh, anybody anymore. And we all kind of needed our space. So they couldn't have me with them anymore because if I went out and I got COVID, I'd bring it back to their family. And everybody was basically told to be inside. So my second job that I lost was recently. And in between this period of losing the first job and the second job, I learned how to hustle during the pandemic. And I will share a lot of those tips in the ebook that I am hoping that I will finish, but I've just been super busy. Uh, I've been dancing my butt off and just enjoying myself. And I'll talk about why it's important to do that, despite what you see in front of you and why it really creates more for your life. So the second job that I lost, I was working for this family and they hired me as a household manager because they both had these two houses that they basically got within two, six months. One of them had the house for like six months. The other one had the house for like two years and they were all consultants. They were so busy and they need someone to like help with so many tasks in their house from finding an architect to help with like the landscaping of the backyard to finding someone to um get the birds out of the dryer um you know upstairs and then they wanted me to help with their kids but the kids were a very small part of what i was doing i would only watch the kids for two reasons if there was like a covid outbreak and someone in their class was um uh what do you call it subjected um to expose excuse me to the to the to the um uh, virus or if uh, they needed me to like pick up the kids after school but most of the day i was just doing household tasks like tasks like baking and um doing some really interesting things they need help with like um finding new fabric and decorations and it was really really fun but once they had me watching their kids, um, the kids are disrespectful because the parents were so focused on their job that they neglected their kids and neglected their marriages. The kids were just able to do whatever they wanted to and they talked to me any way they wanted. They didn't do any chores. They would fight if you told them to like put their three clothes away. And it came to, uh, and my breaking point was the day before I was laid off where I was watching like four kids by myself, by the way, while the parents, two of the parents are working from home and the, um, <laughs> one of the kids blew a whistle in my ear and, uh, it was so disrespectful because I asked them not to do it in the house because then I wouldn't be able to hear all the other kids. They blew a whistle in my ear. I told them not to. And then I took the whistle away the second time they did it and they thought it was funny and they were mean to me and, but I wasn't really bothered by them because they're young, but they're old enough to understand things. They're like 10. So they basically said, you're a very mean person. And this girl said, no matter what you do, my mother's going to forgive me. And that was when I realized that I did not have to put up with this crap. And that's when I started to think of all the signs from the universe that were telling me like to think about what I want to do. But I ignored that because I was so obsessed with making the money and it was like consistent pay every single Friday and Saturday. Um, I knew what to do, but I was deeply, deeply disrespected. And so for people that are in jobs where and I, I want to really say that I have a lot of privilege in the sense that I can talk about these things. I'm in the Western world and like I, you know, know that there are people across the country that are going through different circumstances than I am, where they don't have these resources, where there isn't like a lot of internet access and stuff, where they don't know how they can make a way out. And I, and I really hope that people can stay positive 
And I hope that when I do finish my ebook for this, that I, the chapter that I write on that is adequate enough. Um, but for people that are in the world that I'm in right now, do not take any crap from anybody. And a lot of the times we're in this job, these jobs where we don't really enjoy what we're doing. It's not in line with our dreams, where we are grateful for the income, but it's not enough income to take time off, to be able to pay for the time off. It's not enough income to afford, you know, a life of luxury. And so during this time that I've had off, um, I've just been manifesting, like writing down what I want, reading the books that have been helping me. The, the Science of Getting Rich is a super small book by Wallace D. Waddles. It's a really easy read. It's like 90 pages. and talks about the fact that you have to believe there's more than just what you see. There's more than just poverty. There's more than just these different scenarios because all of these constrictions that we have on how our world is and how... We live in this abundant universe, and I know people say that a lot, but we live in a universe where there really is a lot. People waste food all the time, there's water everywhere, even though there's we're running out of water in some areas, that is because of ecological devastation. But if people took water from other areas and put it back, like we'd have more water and people stop doing things. Like, But we live in an abundant universe where there are so many stars and there's so much air to breathe, but there have been these limitations put on this abundance because people have really tapped into greed and negativity. And really it is negative and positive energy and I can talk about that another time. But when I lost my job, I really start to study these different things of like manifestation, being intentional, understanding that people are gonna help you out if you really believe it, understanding that there is a way out, understanding that I had to really address my subconscious issues and, and why I was staying in these jobs. I took a lot of pride in being a caretaker, but I was doing it for the wrong reasons because I was adultified as a child. I didn't have my mother around because she went missing and my aunt is a really crappy person. And um, my grandparents made my sister and I like the adults, the children of the household. So, and I stayed in Chicago and took care of my grandparents and that translated into all different parts of my life in terms and combining that with my religious background. I was conditioned and combining that with being a woman and being a minority, I was conditioned to give and give and give. And though I attracted the income of like being a nanny and household management into my life, the time that I needed it, I needed to understand how, you know, healthy families worked. And once I understood those lessons, I should have been out. But I didn't listen to like the universe telling me like it's time to go because I was so attached to the identity of being a caretaker. So I stayed in these jobs that treated me badly and I kept attracting these jobs over and over again. And then I didn't understand manifestation and abundance. So I thought that I could only make this amount of money and that this job was my whole life and that once this income was gone, I was screwed. I was fucked. Excuse my language. But that income is just a small part. Money is just energy that we have created to exchange value with each other. You know, like we have dollar bills and coins. Some people have their cows and like milk to exchange value. And once I understood this concept and that the job that treated me like crap was not the end all be all, I was okay with losing my job. And though we're in a pandemic and in a recession, I will never compromise my values ever again consciously. Because the way I was treated that day that they let me go and didn't tell me, I was so joyful when I left there because I was like, I'm going to be back to myself. All this toxic shit's out of my life. But also I was like, I will never allow myself to be treated like this. I will never be so desperate to make money that I will put myself in a scenario where the day starts and I don't even get a hello. And it's just like, a, you gotta do this. And you, it's like, all oh, my kids are just, are, are just this way and like not addressing their issues. Do not compromise your values for the sake of somebody else. A lot of us are in these jobs where we're contributing to the legacy of somebody else instead of our own. And yes, we need to hustle and do things. And I, I want to really help people who have lost their job to hustle and to know that there are temp agencies and all these different things and like to really think about the value that you have and maybe putting that on the internet. But outside of that, don't compromise your value system. Losing your job is not the end of the world. Know that better things are to come and your job is just a chapter of your life. It's not your whole life. Like, yes, I have bills and I have rent and these different things to pay, but I know that they're going to be taken care of because I believe that and I claim that for myself and I'm intentional about it. So be intentional. Part two is coming in one second.
One second. 